let's talk about fossils. Specifically, the fossils that are the candidates for the very earliest hominins right after our ancestors diverged from the ancestors of chimpanzees. Now we're talking about early hominins. First, let's think about the time period that we're talking about. So we're talking about right here from about seven, um, maybe even eight million years ago to about four and a half million years ago. There are three different genera we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about Sahelanthropus chadensis that was found here in the middle of the desert in Chad. That's a little weird. If you remember, most of human evolution happened in East or South Africa. Chad, the middle of the Sahara, that's kind of weird. Um, in a more usual place, we have Auroran Tuganensis from the Tugan Hills of Kenya. And then we have the genus Artipithecus. There are two different species in this genus. This, this map only shows Artipithecus ramidus here in Ethiopia. So let's start talking about the oldest one amongst these. Here we have Sahelanthropus chadensis. So this guy was dated to about seven to six million years ago, found in Chad, which is, of course, in the middle of the Sahara Desert. This skull was just found in the desert. Um, it's really hard to date things that are just surface finds in the desert. Um, so they did some amazing work here. And that's why we have a, a error bar of about a million years. Um, and this is the cranium they found. So this guy here on the right, that's after we've reconstructed him a little bit. Because um, here's how he looked when he was um, taken out of the ground and just cleaned up. We hadn't done anything. You can see he's a little squished. And it's always a little bit difficult to draw any firm conclusions when we have a deformed skull like this, because it's hard to figure out, okay, what is a deformity and what is actual morphology? And what, what corrections can I make to make a guess as to what we actually think this guy looked like? Um, thankfully, we now have wonderful computer technology, so we can do this digitally, because it's really hard to reconstruct thing when it, something when it's in that many pieces. So this is our best guess about how we think Sahelanthropus looked like. Um, so you can see here in this picture, Sahelanthropus has a fairly anterior foramen magnum. Remember, that's something we see in humans because our skull is balanced right on top of our vertebral column, um, and it's fairly posterior in chimpanzees. Sahelanthropus, it's not at quite as centrally located as it is in humans, but it's certainly closer to humans than it is to chimpanzees. Um, there are also, like, some people like to say it's maybe more human-like in shape, um, but, you know, that's a little bit disputed. Um, we also see slightly reduced canines, which is interesting because whereas chimpanzees have large canines, humans have rather small ones. Um, there's also been a little bit of debate about the paleo environment of Sahelanthropus because we think that it was, this guy lived in open woodlands and grasslands, and this is directly against ideas of the savanna hypothesis um, or the idea that we evolved bipedality because of savanna environments to walk between different um, trees with large open spaces in between them. Um, here is one artist's rendition of the environment that Sahelanthropus might have lived in. So you can see it's um, fair. There's a lot of different trees, um, some different megafauna here. We have a leopard and then we have a gazelle farther in the back. Um, their next species we want to talk about is Auroran tugenensis. So just a little bit younger, about 6 million years, found in the Tugan Hills of Kenya. Um, we don't have that much material from these guys. Um, it was discovered in 2000, um, nicknamed Millennium Man. Um, we mostly actually have postcrania, so we have uh, several different femurs. We have about five different individuals here. Um, and the femora we do have look fairly modern. They have a nice, large, globular femoral, femoral head, which we see in modern humans because so much weight is going through our legs. Um, we also see a nice, long femoral neck. Um, the hands, however, do look fairly ape-like. Their um, phalanges are still a little bit curved. But of course, um, we don't have that much material, so it's hard to make too many strong conclusions. Um, the next one we want to talk about is Artipithecus cadaba. So in the genus Artipithecus, there's two species to talk about, and cadaba is the one that is slightly older. So this guy is about six to five million years ago, found in the middle awash of Ethiopia. Um, so here we have um, a lot of fragmentary remains of proscrania, but, and we also have a lot of teeth, so much teeth. 
Um, what's interesting here is it does appear that they have a slightly reduced honing complex in their canines. So you can see in this image, we're comparing Artipithecus cadaba to um, a chimpanzee. So it is a little bit smaller and there doesn't appear to be as much of a honing complex going on. Um, there does seem to be a, a few features of bipedality suggested in the morphology of their feet, um, but their phalanges are still rather long and curved, unlike modern humans. But now let's talk about the other species within Artipithecus, Artipithecus ramidus. So this guy is a little bit younger than Kadabas. This is about 4.4 million years ago, again from the middle of Wash in Ethiopia. Um, the reason we talk about Ramidus a little bit more is we just have a lot more material and most especially we have a partial skeleton which we have nicknamed Artie. Um, and you can see that here. We have a lot of different pieces from this one individual and when we find um, partial skeletons like this it's much easier to get a more complete picture of this organism because now we can actually relate postcrania to a head and get a better idea of what one individual might have looked like including all of the different body proportions. So here we can see Artie a little bit bigger. Um, one thing we do see is they still have ape-like body proportions. So they still have pretty long arms um, in contrast to us who have fairly short ones. Um, and they also have, of course, short legs. They still have these curved phalanges and their brains are relatively small. Um, however, there are, of course, a few different features that do suggest that they are bipedal. Um, here we have a pelvis that is pretty beaten up. This pelvis has seen better days. Um, but with some really hard work, people have reconstructed it. And it does appear to look fairly, um, fairly like modern humans, of course, always take reconstructions with a grain of salt because it has been severely deformed. Um, we do, of course, see um, slightly longer arms in these guys. So all of these together, there's some adaptations to bipedality and some adaptations to climbing. We can look more at our the skull of Artipithecus ramidus. So nice big orbits there. Still has a little bit of a brow ridge, um, but you can see the cranium isn't that big. It's pretty much the same size as a chimpanzee um, of about 300 to 350 um, cubic centimeters. Um, but let's look at these canines again. So here we're comparing the canines of a male and female chimpanzee to both species of Artipithecus. So you can see both species of Artipithecus have notably smaller canines than chimpanzees, and they are relatively um, the same. There doesn't appear to be much dimorphism in canine uh, size or morphology, um, and that is something we definitely see in chimpanzees. So it does appear that they are no longer using their canines for males to fight between each other um, for female mates. Um, here we can look at a reconstruction of Artie's pelvis um, compared to Lucy. Um, Lucy has been around for much longer, so we do a lot of comparisons to Lucy since she's another um, fairly complete um, skeleton in, in the fossil record. Um, and overall, it's certainly not exactly like Lucy's pelvis, but it does appear to be um, more robust um, and a little bit more squat, and of course, more similar to modern humans than that really long and thin chimpanzee pelvis. So we've talked about a lot of features that seem to suggest bipedality in Artipithecus ramidus, um, but here are some that do not. <laughs> so here in their hands, you'll notice that their fingers are still very long and we're seeing definitely curved phalanges. And these are adaptations to climbing because you don't wanna have to hold your hand in this position. It's easier if your bones are just naturally curved, it's gonna make it easier to hold your hand curved like this to hang onto branches. And really the clincher on their feet, their big toe is still t um, very, very abducted. It is way out, way out to the side. Um, so they could still have a nice strong grip with their foot, which is of course very different from us today. Their feet still look a lot closer to chimpanzee feet than human feet. Um, but of course, remember, there's been a lot of different morphological changes that's happened in the human skeleton, and not all of them happened at the same time, and we shouldn't expect them all to happen at the same time. So it is reasonable to expect a few adaptations to bipedality at this point in time, but not all of them.
Um, lastly, let's look back at their foramen magnum again. Um, so you can see we don't have all of the part, the lower part of the cranium for Ardipithecus ramidus. So it is a little bit difficult to figure out exactly where the foramen magnum um, would have been. However, with our best reconstruction, it does appear to be fairly centrally located and similar to the position in later species of Australopithecus. Certainly not as centrally located as modern humans, but it's getting there. And remember, this guy's pretty old, so we can't ex expect him to look exactly like modern humans at this point. Um, so there's always the question of when we're looking at these different species, are they actually hominins? Or are they maybe just hominoids in a different lineage? Are they chimpanzee ancestors? Are they gorilla ancestors? Um, so we think they, they could be on our lineage, but it's also possible they might be chimpanzees. And that's always the debate. Do they? we actually think they're hominins or not? Of the species we talked about today, most people agree that they are hominin ancestors, but there are always a few dissidents. Um, and just to bring us back, there are many, many species that we're going to talk about in human evolution. When we are referring to the earliest hominins, it's all of these guys right here, Sahelanthropus, Auroran, and Artipithecus. Everybody that happens earlier than four and a half million years, and the earliest is about seven million years old. And this um, overlaps the time span, which we think that humans diverge from chimpanzees. So these would have been pretty much right after that split. If you want to learn more, I highly recommend you read this paper by David Begun, The Earliest Hominins is Less More. He does a great job of reviewing some of the major debates and introducing some of the different species in this time period. And of course, Artipithecus ramidus is a relatively um, newly described species, so I highly recommend you check out this um, edition of Science where there are many, many different articles about it. So can you explain? Who were the early hominins and what features did they have? <music>